Unpredictability is a part of sports, and here we have seen bad weather, bad venues, bad travel, and well, an unusual start time, but the one thing you can always count on is game day. Live on theday.com, Casey O'Neill and the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, an afternoon start time here on the campus of NFA. Good afternoon, everyone. Of course, this being uh, a makeup from a previously postponed game, Wildcats of NFA hosting the Colonels of Ledger. Yeah, twice in the same week, these teams facing off, Casey. They faced off on Saturday at Ledger, where NFA came out up on top. A little matinee special, a little springtime weather early in the air, but pretty hot in this gymnasium. Yeah, it's beautiful outside. The gym here, not full to capacity. Four o'clock starting time, a little unusual, but kudos to the NFA student section. They're trying to earn that pizza. They're showing up here, even with the difficult circumstances. And speaking of difficult circumstances, some difficult circumstances for the premier player in the ECC this past week, which lends some interest to this game tonight. Yeah, some doors have been opened for some of these teams in the ECC. Devis Roski's down right now and out. We don't know his status moving forward, but, you know, NFA, you know, Fitch, Ledger, uh, all these teams back into the mix, back into the hunt to get to the championship game with the Mohegan Sun. Yeah, it's an opportunity for a number of teams. For all year long, we thought Waterford and East Lime. Perhaps East Lime's a little bit vulnerable, although I'm sure head coach Jeff Bernardi has other ideas about that. But with that, perhaps that vulnerability comes the opportunity. And NFA has been trying to get into that conversation all year long. Tonight's their opportunity to step it up. Yeah, and both these teams, Casey, battle-tested. You talk about NFA, you know, the tough non-conference schedule along with Ledger. Both these teams are ready to make that next step and challenge possibly Waterford for best in the league. Well, let's talk a little bit about who the players to watch in tonight's game are. All right, Casey, for NFA, we'll go with Mason Jackson. Super, super sophomore is a scoring machine for the Wildcats. Whether it's a long-range jumper or finishing at the rim, Jackson is a handful on the offensive end. At six foot four, Jackson can block shots and is a solid on-ball defender. Only a sophomore, the sky is the limit for Mason Jackson. And for Ledger, uh, how about Kenny Turner? Four years, senior forward is having the best season for Coach Dave Cornish. Kenny is the team's leading scorer, can fill it up for the three-point line or score in the paint. He's a lunch pail guy. Turner's not afraid to hit the floor and do whatever it takes for his team to win. Kenny Turner, a leader on the floor for this Ledger team. And both of those players will have to come up big tonight. But in addition, you know, NFA senior Nick Hay has really come into his own this year, Sports Doctor. He's playing with a confidence and poise. The names he gives credit to might surprise you, but they're some of the ECC's best. Wood drives on Wrighton, looking back door, finds Gomes, swings, corner. Hay with a three is good. Hey, Nicholas. Nick is the prototype NFA basketball player. He's a guy that is a, a leader by example first and foremost he is a student athlete emphasis on student first athlete second when i started this program i was kind of timid i was a little shy to shoot the ball you know juice has always kind of told me you know nick you got to shoot the ball you got to be more confident in your abilities to be able to score and this year i've just kind of taken that and built up my confidence and just decided you know this is my senior year i got to go out and like shoot the ball now like it's time to actually go get it i think players that play the game year rounds get a chance to develop their skills and refine their skills. The more you do anything repeatedly, I mean, repetition is the mother of learning. So the more that you do something, you get better at it. Hey, you, usually it's in the spring and you just go all around the state or all around like New England, anywhere really in the country, and you go play against different teams from other, other uh, states and other places. It's definitely a benefit for me. Uh, I've got a lot of looks from colleges through AAU. I've gotten to play with a lot of great people, you know, I've played with Dev, Liam Spellman, JJ, Kenny, all those guys, you know, Luke, uh, all of them. And, you know, I think I just, I've gotten better playing with all of them. And, you know, I think it's just been a positive experience playing with Coach Spellman and everything. And I think it benefited me, obviously. And I think it could benefit everyone else, too. It's always fun, really. You know, we, we're, we're those teammates during the spring, and then we come here, and it's like we got our own teams, and we kind of battle against each other. You know, we, we have fun. We joke around, you know, on the court. and but. You know, it's all business. You know, we all know when we come to here, it's all NFA against whatever team we're playing against. They're going to take their time. There's their first open look and a beautiful shot by Hay. Those guys are my guys, but obviously you get on the court and it's like, you know, you're not my guys anymore. I'm playing for the school I play for. And Hay will shoot too. And that might be the end of the New London opportunity. Boy, AAU basketball and travel basketball, Casey, has changed the landscape of high school sports now. 
And it's interesting to see all these kids getting together and having friendly rivalries in the offseason. They grow and they be better players. Then they come on the court and they kind of duke it out a little bit. So good for Nick Hayes. He's really growing up a lot this year as a senior. And one of the guys he referenced was Ledger senior Kenny Turner. Now, he's been a three-sport athlete all four years at Ledger. I mean, that's remarkable. He's a staple leading a young Ledger team with only two seniors. Turner is doing it the only way he knows how, and that's through example. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Ken's been a, a dynamic player right from the, from the start. Basketball I've been playing pretty much my entire life. I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do at the next level coming into high school, whether it be basketball, baseball, honestly, or football at the time. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I think being away from basketball would just be really weird to me, especially my senior year. Ken, he's only missed one practice in four years. And that's because he had a, a visit at the University of Hartford. He had to stay overnight. Otherwise, he would have been here. And that, yeah, it's a testament to his commitment, his parents. You know, they understand sports, being there every day, being committed. So he's been a great player for the four years for me. I, and I couldn't ask for another, a better player than Ken, you know, coming through the program. Playing a winter sport, uh, basketball specifically, helps with footwork and conditioning. And those things translate from each sport to the next, so I think it has really helped me a lot. In the past three years that I've been here, we always knew kind of what we had coming into the season. This, this year was a little different. Uh, we had a lot of people who weren't really experienced at the varsity level kind of come up from JV and had to fill in the roles from guys that left in the past. So I think we're, we're working with that right now, but everyone's working hard in practice. Everyone's doing what they have to do to get better, and you know I think we're going to start to get better as the season goes on. We just have to worry about what we do. And if we can execute our game plan and do the things that we can do as a program, as a team, I think we'll be fine. But if we don't do that, it's, it's not going to be pretty on some nights. As the season gets, you know, goes along, we're going to become a better team. And, that, and that's all I ask for, just get better each day. So what we're going through right now, they have to learn from it. If they're learning from it, I'm OK with that. Definitely don't want to have any regrets. I want to make sure that I try to leave it all on the court as much as I can and try to make sure that uh, people are looking up to me the right way, you know, especially the younger guys. How I said, we only have two seniors this year, so I want to make sure that the guys below me, the juniors, sophomores, freshmen, they kind of look up to me and say, I want to do it just like that. I want to do it how he does it. Football, soccer, basketball, and baseball. The ECC's version of the Ironman, Casey. 12 varsity letters in four years for Kenny Turner. It's hard to believe he's a senior. I remember him four years ago as a freshman hitting a big shot at Legend High School. Good for that young man. On his way to the University of Hartford to play baseball, and he has earned every accolade that he has received. He will be a feature player tonight. Come on back, a little afternoon soiree at NFA. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. It's always stayed with me, right on through all the different ranks that I held in the police department. There are about a thousand unsolved murders in Connecticut. And our department really wanted to solve them. Case Unsolved, a new podcast from the newsroom at The Day, tells the stories of unsolved murders in Connecticut and the family, friends, and law enforcement left without resolution. Listen at caseunsolvedpodcast.com or your favorite podcast app. The following is a presentation of The Day. Everyone wants to be in the conversation about who is the best team, player, or crowd. To be in the conversation, you cannot let up, let down, or take a night off. It is relentless. NFA wants to be mentioned with East Lyon, and Waterford. And with the old lion and the young lion, senior Nick Hay and sophomore Mason Jackson, they are close. Mix in the best dressed coach in the league and a raucous student section, and NFA has people talking. Ledger has been in the mix for years, but these colonels are young and inexperienced as a group. Player of the year candidate Kenny Turner is all you'd want in a senior leader, averaging 19 points a game. And with mature guards Omar Whitmore and Jaden Bickham, the Colonels are dangerous. Coach Dave Cornish will have them ready. Can NFA stay in the conversation, or will the Colonels give them something to talk about? 
We find out on game day, live on the day.com. We are back at the field house on the campus of Norwich Free Academy. Casey O'Neill and the sports doctor live. Game day presents the Norwich Free Academy Wildcats playing host to the Ledger Colonels. Now, sports doctor, Ledger's not even in the postseason yet. They still need a couple of wins, but that uh, aforementioned you know, opportunities and door being opened, uh, whereas NFA wants to get themselves in the, in the conversation for top team. Right now, Ledger just searching for a chance to play extra basketball. Yeah, six and eight overall this year, Casey. Now think about that. Dave Cornish has been used to 14, 15, 16 win seasons and deep runs into both tournaments. But Dave has really had to do a you know one heck of a job coaching these kids and piecing them together around with what he's gotten. Kenny Turner. Well, listen, he's got six games left, so he is optimistic that they can make a push and get a couple of wins and at least qualify for the state tournament. Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty confident. I'm sure you do too, Sports Doctor, that they'll win two more games. Yeah. Uh, but the, the last couple of weeks have been very strange in the, in the ECC. A lot of teams hit that sort of lull in the schedule where yeah. they have to grind through it. The good teams do. Uh, we saw New London starting to play a little bit better after playing brutal basketball for a stretch. Uh, East Lime's going to obviously have to figure things out. Look for them to circle the wagons, the old... Uh, Chris Berman, uh, you know, aside about Buffalo, look for them to, to really circle the wagons there and come up with something. Let's take a look more specifically at tonight's game. What are the keys tonight? The sure thing, Casey, the sports doctor's keys to the game. For NFA, hit the boards. Win the battle of boards on both ends of the floor. Not your turn. Young Wildcats must value each possession and limit their turnovers and ride the hot hand. Whether it's Hay or Jackson, find them and let them score. For a ledger, Plain and simple, make shots. Take advantage of clean open looks and knock down shots. Second chance, hit the offensive glass and create second chance scoring opportunities. And last but not least, team basketball. Everyone must chip in and be productive in order for Ledger to come out on top. Well, we want to know where are you watching tonight's game? So send us your pictures. Where are you watching this game? Not everybody can be here at four o'clock in the afternoon. We want to know where you are. Send us a picture on Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag GameDayCT. We'll share our favorites at halftime and during the Mr. G's post-game show. So Sports Doctor, for NFA, here's a real opportunity for them to step up, get into the talk of the league. Uh, we know that East Lime's gonna have some figuring out to do. Uh, Waterford seems to be playing its best basketball. So what does NFA need to do tonight and moving forward to get themselves in that conversation? Well, I think get rolling a little bit, Casey. I think find themselves in some sort of rhythm as they get down to the end of the season. They're 10 and six right now. They've navigated a brutal schedule of non-conference. Uh, they've been in the heat of the battles with some of these teams in league play too. They played, you know, obviously East Lyme and Waterford, very, very tough, but just find a way to get hot and get things cooking down the stretch of the season. Well, let's take this opportunity to meet the players in tonight's ballgame. Ken Turner, North Stillington Elementary School. Seamus McGraw, Ledger Center School. Omar Whitmore, IDCS. Jaden Bickham, Gallifield School. Xander Hutchins, JWL. Darrell Cagle, Huntington Elementary. Elijah Morin, RMMS. Nick Hay, Porter Elementary. Carlos Montron, Greenville Elementary. Xavier Marquez, Waconic Elementary. Mason Jackson, Sales School Elementary. Nolan Bokatan, Canterbury Elementary School. Andrew Gromko, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Kenyatta Peak, Skis Elementary School. Osman Saru, Waquanik Elementary. Blaze Bosajor, Chug Jug Elementary. It's the Sports Doctor, Keith O'Brien. You want to hear from local coaches, athletes, and personalities? Well, how about giving my weekly podcast a listen? I mean, do you have a kid in mind, though, John, who would take the uh, last shot down by two with, uh, say, six seconds left? God almighty. I mean... I give you a look at sports from a fan's perspective as well. Do you have a problem with him pulling up from about 35 feet, you know, from the basket, Coach? Um, we have had talks about this. The Sports Doctor here on theday.com.
is a production of the Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support game day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or a digital subscription to the day at theday.com slash subscribe. All right, sports doctor, the NFA crowd is trying to muster it up. The student section has shown up the best they can. And we've got, look at that. It's the sports, sports doctor. Sports doctor with Nick Hay. Look at that, huh? I don't Isn't know. That something? Who's famous, me or him? I'm not going to lie to you. That makes me both uh, very happy for you and um, a little bit nauseous all at the same time. Oh, jealous. I thought you were going to say jealous. Well, uh, jealous. Je jealousy is an ugly thing. I would never say that as far as you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's how you know you're big time, too, when you get your pictures are ticking with uh, Nick Hay. Is that? Well, it is. That's, yeah, I was, that's big time. I was thinking the same. Who's that guy time. with Nick Hay? That's what they're <laughs> saying down there. It right, should be a lot of fun here, Casey. Let's get things rolling. Turner wins the jump, and Ledger will have its first possession of the game, and Omar Whitmore passes it off to Jaden Bickham. A straight man-to-man -man defense here by the Wildcats. Inside, Turner spins, lots of moves up and under, and finally he's got it. Check that, that Seamus McGrath down on the block. He is a co-captain out there for Dave Cornish. McGrath's come along this way. He's really grown as a player, filling that role at center. Drive to the basket by Gromko, and he's fouled. And he'll go to the line, Andrew Gromko, the senior. A lot of familiar names yeah. on that NFA team. Xavier Marquez, Nolan Mulkentine, guys that, of course, were part of that football team as well as the ledger side of things. So a lot of multiple sport athletes in uh, today's ball game. And Gromko will shoot two. I like the, the Kevin McHale-esque work of Seamus McGrath in that first possession. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of those kids that's kind of grown up and kind of you know, went from a JV player last year to starting and a, and a captain this year. And I think that's, you know, three years of work culminating into his senior year. And, you know, Dave trusts him out there. He, he likes him on the floor. Be productive. Do good things. You know, a little cross screen that Ledger likes to go. They dump it back down low. McGrath with the left hand that time gets it to go. Seamus McGrath's going to have to... Get me starting doing some Scottish impressions here. Yeah, a little size advantage up front with McGrath and with Kenny Turner outside of Mason Jackson. Not a lot of height out there for the Wildcats. Oh, call glass next time, Mason Jackson. From the foul line, banks it home. A little stutter step by Bickham. Inside, nice look to McGrath. And Seamus McGrath has all six of Ledger's points. Uh, it's too easy that time to, to catch off the bounce on the layup. Jackson misfires a bottom three, and Whitmore pushes for Ledger. Cutter underneath, foul as Bickham went to the basket. Nice look by Whitmore, and Bickham will go to the line. All right now, Casey, when you look at Ledger, their first four touches, everything is at the paint, in the in the rim, in, you know, at the paint, in the, at the rim, and they're just trying to get easy buckets for themselves. Not a lot of size on the NFA no. side of things. You know, their tallest player. Jackson, who's 6'5", is really a perimeter guy, a wisp, wispy 6'5". And you got some more of the, the burly size of McGrath and Turner. So taking advantage of that size in the early going. You've got three layups by McGrath and then a trip to the free throw line for Bickham off a of, you know, foul on a layup attempt. So a high percentage shots being taken yep. by the Colonels. Yeah, Darrell Cagle's got some good size on him as well for a freshman. Freshman, yeah. You know. Father played here. Yeah. Future is uh, not certainly not, you know, not dark in Ledger. Early four-point lead for the Colonels, and NFA will go to work. Jackson being defended by Turner, premier matchup there. Kick, three-pointer from the side, no good. Strong rebound, nice dish underneath. The finish by Marquez on a beautiful look from Hay. Yeah, that's the offensive set they like to run. They like to dive the three-point shooter to the corner, Casey, run him off of a screen from the foul line. And that time, Marquez cleaned up his own mess for two. Kegel crossover, drives, hangs in the air. Bank shot is good. Nice move from the freshman, Darrell Cagle. Yeah, four layups and two free throws for Legend so far. Jackson's being guarded by Turner. What a great matchup that is. Pull up three pointer. Good. MJ with a tray. Size advantage right there. He can rise up, shoot it over anybody. 6 4 with a high arcing on his jump shot. It's tough to defend. Bickham yep. will restart. Turner not had a touch yet for Ledger. All the way, drive, left hand no good. Marquez rebounds. 
He spins, pushes. Up ahead it goes, Molkentine. Nice dish to Gromko for two. NFA creating offense off their defense that time, Casey. They're turning up the pressure a little bit on the defensive end, extending, challenging passes, which solid on-ball defense for the Wildcats. Inside, Bickham spins, no good. Strong rebound, Gromko tries to dribble. Can't get off the snide there as Bickham was playing good on-ball defense, but it'll be NFA basketball. Marquez. Jackson will pull the trigger at any moment. There's Hay. Gromko all the way to the basket. Loses it right into the hands of Nick Hay. Back and forth action here in the early going and both teams finding opportunities. 50-50 balls, second chance scoring opportunities. Real important in this game. Quick little turn over there, a little Offensive foul by Ledger, turn over there, wasted trip, no shot attempt. Rich Radichoni, Rad says, no good, gotta go the other way. Marquez, the junior guard, over to Hay, and now Hay back up top. Just into the ball game, Kenyatta peak in the corner, Jackson spot up three, wide open, no good, back iron, and Ledger will run. Whitmore took it right off the left cheek. Tries to drive through and we're gonna get a reach. Whitmore got lucky there. He tried to dribble through the pressure, Casey, and we've seen bad things happen when that goes on. I like teams that pass the ball, advance the ball through the pass, never mind dribbling through the pressure. Find the open man off the bounce, or off the skip. Number one, Marquez, defending number one, Bickham. Turner, Cagle takes a spot up three. Back iron, no good. Jackson rips down the rebound. He'll push. Jackson has Kegel on his hip, swings far side. Marquez foregoes the three. Shot by Ledger, getting back, playing tough D. Jackson stutters, drives, no foul. Kegel comes out of the pack. Pull up for Turner, no good. Gets his own rebound. Drives baseline, spins away. Can't find it. And NFA will come out the other direction. Up ahead, the peak, and he can't control, throws it back inbounds, there's Kegel. Wild here. action, here comes Turner. And a beautiful strip, but it'll stay Ledger basketball. Kenny Turner on a breakaway, good defense there by NFA, not giving up the layup. So a little up and down action after a uh, bit of a lunch pail start. Ledger will stack it up. Inside it goes McGrath. Up top, Whitmore, and we're gonna get a walk. Those are the quick shots that Ledger needs to take. I think if Whitmore has that three-pointer on the perimeter, Casey, let it fly. You know, maybe knock one down, maybe loosen up the NFA defense, but sometimes you don't have to put everything on the floor. An open look, take it. Jackson pulls up in Turner's face, no good. Rebound loose underneath, Mas uh, Montron comes out of it. Marquez, stutter step, hangs in the air. Blocked by Bickham. Now Jackson steals it back for NFA. Sloppy basketball. Wild three, no good. Peak with the rebound. Blocked by McGrath. And out of the pack comes Kegel. The sloppy basketball the last two or three trips for the Colonels on offense. It's tough when you work, work, work on a defensive end, get a fast break, and don't get a shot off. That's that's Leading. Sincere Gray comes into the lineup for Ledger. Drop back a little man to man defense. Sincere Gay, tra uh, Gray, transfer from New London, son of Nick Gray, former Whaler basketballer. Hanging in the air, banking it home is Carlos Montron for two. A lot of different players right now for NFA in the mix, a lot of different touches. Five players in the scoring column right now for the Wildcats. They extend the lead to five. Turner dumps it inside, McGrath. McGrath spins, hangs in the air, blocked from behind, but we'll get a foul on Jackson. Seamus McGrath will go to the line to shoot two. Attracting a crowd in that time, you saw Kenyatta Peak, you saw Mason Jackson, 
So a little double down that time on McGrath. Fought, worked hard, got a second chance opportunity to find himself at the free throw line. He's been active. He's been the Legends' best player so far. He has eight points, all via the layup. So McGrath will shoot two. Knocks down the first one to cut into this five-point NFA lead. And Hay will come back into the ball game, and he'll give Jackson a breather. One more for Seamus McGrath. Back iron, no good. Tipped around, though. McGrath gets his own rebound. And Turner has it. And Ledger will reset. McGrath dumps it down low. Spinning and heading to the basket. No good. Tip, no good by Gray. But McGrath pulls up baseline and knocks it down. He has 11 points. You see the three bigs. You see McGrath, Hutchins, and Turner in the game for Ledger all at the same time. Gray good hands. Steal the other direction, but we're going to get a... Whistle on the floor, and it looks like it'll stay Ledger basketball, and Gray will inbound underneath. We have a number 22 on the floor for Ledger, who is not on our roster. So we'll have to effort that's who that Xander is. Hutchins. Uh, He's ranked as third. You sure that's not Xander Hutchins down there on the end of the bench for Ledger? Positive. The one that looks just like his brother's? Down at the end of the ledger event? No. I'll take your word for it, Sports. Yeah, that's it. You say it's him. You know more than me, Sports Doctor. Especially well, about ledger basketball. About ledger basketball, I am, yeah. Peak will run the point now for NFA. Guarded by McGrath. Peak crosses over. Blocked by McGrath. Nicely done, and Turner will push. Up ahead, it goes to Whitmore. And a left-handed layup is good, and we're all tied at 15. Uh, the delivery from the baseball player to the receiver, and Whitmore on the other end, Kenny Turner showing off his arm. Marquez hangs in the air. Basket no good. We're going to get an offensive foul against Xavier Marquez. Uh, and you know what? Uh, Seamus McGrath stayed home, took the charge. He has got 11 points, and he's doing a little bit of everything out there right now for a ledger. Taking charges, getting rebounds, leading the scoring load. Ledger's come back with a little 5-0 run of themselves, Casey, after trailing by five. Tied this thing up. Good first quarter. A little sloppy with the basketball. Dumped down inside. Underneath, and it's put back and in. And Ledger takes a lead. And they are killing NFA in the paint right now. That same spot, they've got six baskets from the block there in the right-hand corner. Now, Sports Doctor, not that I don't trust you, but Athletic Director Jim Bunicor just texted in and said 22 is Xander Hutchins. We now have confirmation. Not that I didn't believe you. I believed you the whole way. Official. It's official now. Hay from the corner. Good. Nick Hay knocks down a triple to give NFA the lead at the end of the first quarter. Last shot off of Whitmore. No good. And we have a one-point ball game. Second quarter action coming up. You're watching game day live. My favorite early basketball memory is probably scoring my first points when I was probably nine or ten in rec. When I started playing basketball in fifth grade, I scored I scored my first points. It was a layup. It was my freshman year, got my first dunk. Playing rec when my dad was a coach because I got to spend a lot of time with him and my siblings. Going to the gym with my dad, uh, shooting around, you know, he always took me to the gym with him whenever he coached. Just youth league and my mom was the coach. It didn't really make things easier because she wasn't like easy on me because she was my mom and stuff, so she kind of made things a little bit harder. I had the AU tournament. It was a championship game. Like I was back in fifth grade. I hit the game winner, and it was like from half court, and it was crazy. Going back to when I was in elementary school, the score was I think we were down by like three, two or three points, and we needed a basket. And uh, I remember I I got a steal on an inbounds play, and I was always I always get super mad. My eyebrows would get like like a unibrow kind of. My my parents always make fun of me for. Uh, having like a unibrow and um, I remember taking it coast to coast and scoring and going overtime and winning the game and this was a good memory. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, the Wildcats cheering section in full throat. They showed up today, four o'clock afternoon and they're showing Nick Hay and the sports doctor in one of the great pictures 
We've seen a lot of things. We saw a nice sign last week at Old Lyme High School. We see pictures here. We see pizza boxes. We see a little bit of everything here on game day, don't we, my friend? And we have. And right now, we got ourselves a good ball game. One point NFA lead here going into the start of the second quarter. NFA with the ball. And they're swinging it around the perimeter. A little quick launch three pointer from Mulkentine. No good. And NFA misses an opportunity. Ledger will push the other way. Gray dumps it inside. Turner. Inside McGrath, and that ball is loose back to Turner, drives baseline, and we're going to get an offensive foul. Great job. Nolan Mulkentine stood his ground, and Kenny Turner went right over to two former football players, one current. Mulkentine, of course, the great wide receiver at NFA. Turner, of course, was a fine football player before he decided to go become a goalie. In soccer, yeah. Found his niche on the, uh, on the pitch. And speaking of pitch, he can do that too. Yeah. Inside it goes, wide open, peak, drives, hangs, can't finish, Turner with a rebound. Talk about athletes trying to make the most of their high school sporting career. Kenny Turner is one of those kids. I don't think he ever, he never took a season off. I don't think he's ever taken a playoff. No, and I, I think Kenny Turner could have played college sports in all three of the sports that he plays. Yeah. I think he could have played college soccer. I think he could play college basketball. And uh, instead he's going to go play Division One baseball. And I think the future is really bright for Kenny Turner. Great family of athletes, of course. His father, great athlete. And Turner has held on to that mantle quite well. Hard to believe. Feels like only yesterday he was a freshman. You know, when he was a freshman, the ledger people said, keep your eye on Kenny Turner. You know, he's going to keep growing. He's got a great, you know, great athletic background. And he lived yep. up to the hype. Four years, 12 sports. There he is on cue. Big three ball from the corner. Kenny Turner. Well, I figured I was just going to talk about him until he knocked one down, so I appreciate him doing it sooner rather than later. A catch-and-shoot situation, no hesitation, pulled the trigger on it and buried it. Now, with Jackson not in the game, NFA is going to need someone else to step up, and that's probably got to be Hay. Swing it to him, quick shot, three ball from Hay, no good. Rebound, Mulkentine drives to the basket. Another block by McGrath, and Gray comes out of it. Sincere Gray tries to thread the needle, probably unwisely, to get it to Whitmore out of bounds, it will become, looks like Ledger basketball, and Jackson will check, uh, check back into the game, replacing Kenyatta Peak. And that's a big lineup out there for Dave Cornish right now with Turner, Gray, McGrath, Hutchins, and, and Whitmore at the point. They have taken advantage of their size thus far in the first half. Nothing there, lob inside to Turner. Now he's out of the three-point line, guarded by Marquez, a definitive size advantage, but Marquez is a tough kid. We saw Marquez chase yeah. Kev Ostrowski all over the place earlier this year. McGrath, pump fake, drives, can't get it to go. Tipped out of bounds, it'll stay Ledger ball. Boy, you like that pump fake, the little, just to get his man off balance a little bit, just couldn't finish at the rim. Next time, son. Keep going back to the well. One of the most underutilized moves in all of basketball. Mm. Just a little pump fake. Oh, beautiful jobs. Kept in bounds. Hay with the steal. Mulkin time the other way. Two guys, though, Gromko and Jackson, no talking. Hay pulls up from the foul line and buries it. And Nick Hay with seven points early going here for Coach Justy and the Wildcats. Got a good ball game here. I like the, I like the way this one is uh, shaping up. I like this, what Coach Cornish is doing with a big lineup, too. I think that's, gonna, I think that's really going to keep them in this game, exploiting their size. They don't have as much perimeter talent as NFA but they do have a definitive size advantage. In the corner now, Turner hounded by Gromko. You know, it's a luxury too, and McGrath and Turner can go back and get the ball. Kenny Turner begging for a ball reversal down in the corner. There it is. Baseline, now back to Gray. Nice, finds a cutting Whitmore, pump fake, stripped out of the pack comes Gromko. NFA with numbers. Jackson foregoes the three and throws it out of bounds. Yeah, and Whitmore on that last trip, Casey, just pull up and knock down that little eight-footer. No reason to put the ball on the floor there. Kenny Turner found him in the paint. Rise up, hit it from seven foot. Take what they give you and move on to the next play. Darrell Cagle back into the ball game for the Colonels. A lot of these kids like to put the ball on the floor and go into the pressure. It's just, uh, you must see that a lot. It drives me crazy. <laughs> McGrath, pump fake, up and under is good. And the foul on Mulkentine. What a nice move from Seamus McGrath. He's got 13 points right now, Casey. He's leading the way for this team, and he is playing on a mission right now. Love the up and under. The, he is the, my new Kevin McHale yeah, well, of the ECC. Yeah. He's given every possible up and under and juke. Yeah. And 
no good on the extra opportunity, and Gromko will have it. Inside it goes, nice out pass. Hay with a three-pointer, no good. And a strong rebound by Turner. Good ball movement, but they come up empty. In the corner, Cagle with a three, short iron, and Jackson rebounds. That was there for Cagle to get his own miss. He got a little lazy on the three-point line, and Gray came up with it. Kids they, that follow their own shots. Absolutely. In the corner, Marquez, wide open, triple. Back iron, no good. Hustle rebound by Hay. Molkentine now to a cutting Hay. Molkentine, the receiver, was the quarterback that time with the assist to Hay. Nick Hay moving without the basketball, puts himself in the right position at the right time. Turner strong to the basket, but nothing there. Marquez will push for NFA. Ledger senses a trap. Five seconds, five. There and you they go. Got it. Yeah. They got it, good call, sports doctor. Tough place to pick up your dribble right there by the half court line and the end line. Nice job by Ledger jumping that. Yep, trap zone number one. You get a wounded fish, the shark's coming. Three minutes of change remaining. We got ourselves a ball game, 22 all here in the first half. See if they can find a way to get Cagle moving a little bit. Freshman can score the basketball. Gray's another one that can score the basketball. Just find a way to get these guys in good positions and make good plays. There they go, they run Gray off a double screen. Yeah, they had him too, there. they had him. Yep. Tipped around, loose on the floor, and a turnover. It's gonna become NFA basketball. You know, when these players are rubbing off these screens and double screens, give them the basketball. They're open for a split second. Don't wait. Just deliver the rock. That's the play that's called. Deliver the rock and let him make a play. I tell my kids all the time, you gotta pass it where you know he's going to be, yes. not where he is. Yes. Jackson, double pumps. Bad pass and out of bounds, it'll stay NFA ball. 2.40 remaining here in the first half. Neither team able to seize any sort of control. A little choppy play here in the second quarter, that's all. Inside now, Molkentine. Underneath, finds Marquez, reverse layup. No good. And ball's loose, we're going to get a jump ball. Got to like the athleticism of Nolan Mulkentine. Yeah, and right now, McGrath is kind of changing the game with his presence on the defensive end. He didn't block that shot, you know, but he, he made Mulkentine and Marquez make the adjustment in the midair. He's playing a nice game. I'm, I'm very impressed with Seamus McGrath. Yeah, only 6'2", but he plays much bigger. Yeah. He plays with a motor, too. He's just uh, relentless out there. Montron back in the game for NFA, and they show a little bit of pressure. Turner breaks it with Gray. Gray, the lefty. Hesitates, outside it goes. McGrath drives to the basket, hangs in the air, up and under, no good. Turner with a spinning rebound, no good. And Jackson pulls it down, looking to run. Jackson to a cutting Molkentine, basket is good, and the foul. Beautiful vision from Mason Jackson, the left-handed finish by Molkentine, and an opportunity at a three-point play. Oh, he took the words right out of my mouth, left-handed finish, shielding the defender off with his body. Takes the pressure, takes the hit, lays it in with his left three-point opportunity coming up for the Cats. That's a good run out, a good leak out that time by Mulkentine. And he can run, you know that. And another thing I like about both Turner and, Mulk and, uh, and Jackson, they might be the biggest kids on the floor, but they can both handle. Hmm. So they can go up and rebound on the defensive end and then push the ball and lead a break in the other direction. Can't complete the three-point play. And a nice heads-up rebound from Hay. Mulcatine swings, and a fail reset with a two-point lead. A lot of perimeter action here for NFA. Running a little 1-3-1 one, one high post, trying to get it to peak, as Ledger's very comfortable in this zone. There's an open look for Hay. Three ball, back iron, no good. Strong rebound from Hutchins. Feels like I've said that a few times. Gray, zip pass underneath, Hutchins, Stern cannot finish. NFA will clear the rebound. Montron, oh, a little miscommunication with Hay. Hay zigged and Montron thought he was gonna zag. Zig and zag? Our zig first, and zag? Our first look at Elijah Morton into the game. Zig and zag, yes. Well, zigging and zagging out there? Cutting, dodging, moving? Pick and roll. 
You just, you just it's old school. You're just saying random terms right Pretty now, much. or Pretty much. Yeah, anybody, you know, anybody can do that. Avocado, <laughs> mayonnaise. Well, pressure here, Casey. So two, two, one, full court look. The nice. token pressure trying to disrupt the Colonels a little bit. Gray drives into problem traffic, spins and nails it anyway on the baseline. Mm, nice move that time by Sincere Gray. That was one of those no, 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 yeah, nice, good nice shot. shot. And a brand new ball game, we're tied up. Peek gets it at the high post, drives to the basket, hangs with the left hand, but he'll be fouled by Gray and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Strong move by Kenyatta Peek. Uh, he's just an athlete out there, you know, he plays football, basketball, he's got that you know, strong build, good player. He's one of those kids you need out there doing some of the dirty work things and rebounding and scoring and playing some D. You know, the game of basketball evolving, you know, a lot more athletes than pure basketball players, and he's one of those kids that, you know, brings a little bit of both to the table. One more for Peek. And he knocks them both down and gives Smooth. NFA a two-point lead with That's under smooth. a minute here remaining. There's that token pressure for NFA. A lot of ball handlers on the floor right now for Ledger, however. 2-2-1. Well, Bring somebody to the middle of the floor if you're Ledger. Beat the pressure. Under 40 seconds remaining. And Ledger's very comfortable here. Let's see if they hold the ball. Whitmore drives. We're going to get a timeout. 30-second timeout from Dave Cornish as he wants to talk things over with 30 seconds remaining and the opportunity to get the last shot here of the first half. NFA with a two-point lead here at home over the Wildcats of NFA, uh, excuse me, of Ledger over the, let's try that again. NFA, the home team with a two-point lead over the visiting Colonels of Ledger. There we go. I mean, we want to know, where are you watching tonight? Of course, you can chime in and let us know where you are watching. All you have to do is go to Game, Time C Game Day CT on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and let us know and we will share our favorites at a halftime and during the Mr. G's post game show. So just go on to social media and let us know. Talking it over, the Colonels will find out with 30 seconds remaining if they want to settle for one shot, which I imagine they will. Down two would be a, wouldn't be a bad place to go in at halftime. Underdogs here, the Colonels. So we'll see what they draw up with. Caden Whipple into the basketball game, another freshman for Ledger. He'll go way up on top to Whitmore. And Ledger will be very content to slowly matriculate the basketball. Whipple and Whitmore, the two guards. And they're in no man's land, so they're just going to let it pass in the corner. Inside it goes. Turner back out. Whipple swings. Whitmore. Kegel under 10 seconds. Whipple on top. Jumper, he's fouled, and with 1.7 seconds, we're going to get a foul, and Omar Whitmore is going to shoot two. The last thing Coach Chris Giusti wanted here at NFA. Uh, Ledger was out of sync, wasn't really sure how much time was left. A wild shot by Omar Whitmore at the buzzer, and he's going to get rewarded with two free throws. First one is up, and it is good. Substitutions into the ball game. And hard to believe, but Omar Whitmore is a free throw away from tying this game up as we head into halftime. And in and out it goes, but he'll get one more because of all things, it was a three-pointer that he was fouled on. So believe it or not, NFA could have gone into halftime ahead, but instead, he misses the second one as well. And it goes bell round and he gets the friendly roll we are tied up, barring something unforeseen. We're going to get a walk with .3 seconds remaining. And so believe it or not, Ledger will have .3 seconds remaining in which to get off a final shot. In a 26-26 ball game, the scoreboard here at NFA has it wrong. The scoreboard here at NFA has it 27-25, and I do not believe that's the correct score. Now they have, there we go. See, we're ahead of the game. The Mike DeMauro, Peter Wapp, you guys aren't going to let anything happen here. Point three seconds remaining, and Dave Cornish wants a timeout. Really? With point three seconds left? Well, because they've got point three seconds left. So, 26 all, NFA and Ledger here at NFA. And 
Our jobs on game day are just beginning. We've got all kinds of fun stuff to bring you. Don't miss th starting this Saturday, the ECC Wrestling Finals, 4 o'clock over at Fitch High School. And we will have live coverage of the ECC Wrestling Finals. The great CJ Saddy will be in the booth with me, and the sports doctor will be where he belongs, down on the mat. Of course, following that, we have the rematch at the X next Tuesday night. East Lime at Waterford. Of course, the Vikings giving Waterford their only loss on the season, and you know the X is going to be fired up for a little payback at Waterford. And then the following Friday, we'll be at Stonington High School, the Bears' lair, the rematch between Stonington and St. Bernard's, and then ECC cheerleading on the 16th. A lot of action left here on game day. Whipple, Cagle at the buzzer. Good if it goes, but it does not go. And we are all tied at 26. And the sports doctor is going to talk to visiting coach Dave Cornish and find out his feelings on the first half. Sports doctor with Coach Cornish. All right, head coach Dave Cornish, coach headed into the locker room, tied up at halftime. Um, was the message to get the ball inside in the first half? Absolutely. Uh, we saw something in Saturday's game, and we wanted to try to exploit it. How do you close this thing out? How do you find a way to win? Uh, just got to play harder. And, um, you know, just, just be team-oriented, play together, and just play harder. That's all. All right, good luck in the second half, coach. Casey? Thank you, sports doctor. We're tied up at halftime, 26 all here at NFA. One of my favorite features that we've been doing all year long have been the interviews with the players about their hidden talents or things we wouldn't know, famous basketball memories. But my favorite is their favorite teachers. So let's find out about Ledger and NFA and some of their favorite teachers. All-time favorite teacher is uh, my graphic design teacher, Ms. Carmody. She's just really chill. I, I talk to her about anything. Mr. Wisniewski, he teaches um, biology I had in freshman year and I just had a good connection with him ever since the start. He, I can talk to him about anything. And John Fields, Mr. Fields, he's my math teacher in eighth grade and I don't know, he just had like a cool vibe to him. Mr. Smith, seventh grade, he was just really funny and he made like class enjoyable. Favorite teacher is probably Miss Flax, helps me with everything, anytime I need help. Grade's still good, still willing to help me and get my grade up no matter what. My all time favorite teacher is probably Mr. Legnos. Uh, he's my accounting teacher. And yeah, we're real close. I've had him for the past two years, junior and sophomore year, and it's kind of like home in his classroom. Miss Ekstrom from the middle school. I had her in eighth grade. She's a history teacher, and she made it super fun. Probably my fourth and fifth grade teacher, Miss St. George. She was always there for me, even outside of school. Um, fifth grade, my favorite teacher, Miss St. George. She passed away a year ago. It was just sad to see her go because she taught me so much. Well, gotta love the student section here at NFA showing up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the quest for the pizzas. Of course, the, our chosen student section of the year will get pizzas delivered by me and the sports doctor. And so far, we've seen some brilliant efforts. This, this has been the week of the Wildcats. Old Lyme now here at NFA. And sports doctor, Coach Cornish, was pretty open about the fact they saw something that they want to go after. Oh, well, you make the adjustment and then put the game in the play, game plan in the place, Casey. And right now, it's working for them again, trying to slow things down a little bit in the offensive end, pound it on the block. And Seamus McGrath has been just an absolute beast down there right now with 13 points, all leading all scores in this game for the Ledger Colonels. Well, they're going to have to continue that play on the inside. NFA and Ledger all tied at 26. Let's take a moment to look at some of the great athletes that we had this fall, the all area athletes on game day. I'm Sydney Iannatuno. I play volleyball at East Lime High School. Hi, I'm Maya Johnson. I play soccer at Lime Old Lime. Hi, I'm Ella Dijak. I'm from Waterford High School and I swim. I'm Sam Whitaker. I'm from East Lime High School and I do cross country. My name is James McGowan. I'm Stonington High School, Stonington Soccer. I'm Mady Whitaker. I go to Montville High School and I run cross country. Hi, I'm Miranda Ruda. I go to Stonington High School and I play field hockey. My name is Jacob Commander and I, go, I attend Science and Tech Magna High School. My sport is football. I started off when I was two years old, playing with my grandpa in his backyard right next to the Stone Stonington Como rec fields. I started running around third grade. Uh, my dad, he was always active. He went out for runs all the time. 
and I wanted to go with him really badly. I remember when I was little, I have this cousin who actually lives in Texas, and she'd always tell me about her cross-country races and her track meets, and I really started to look up to her, and I kind of wanted to be just like her, so I joined the sport. My sister played field hockey, and I've always been really competitive to try to win over, like, the love of my parents and, like, try to have them like me more. So when I saw my sister play field hockey, that's when I kind of wanted to start off playing it, and I ended up really liking it, so I stuck with it for the four years. I started football when I was young. I was seven. Um, I kind of got forced into it, so I, was, I didn't really like it, but my mom was like, you know, you need some discipline, so... It helped a lot, actually. It made me grow as a person, and I had grown to love the sport. All my friends decided to do volleyball club in middle school as kind of just something fun to do after school, and all of them ended up quitting, but I really did like it. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it in high school, but when I got there, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. My favorite memory that I have is my brother. We've been playing in the snow. We were in the snow. We had a blizzard, and... I came through and I, uh, I hit stick my brother, my big, big brother, so I was kind of excited about that. When I was like seven or eight, when I lived in New Hampshire, I tried out for like the swim team and I just remember that me and my dad were standing there and we were, I was like the first one, like I was all ready to have my cap and goggles on and I was just so excited and like all the other kids were like scared to get in the water and when he said we could go, I was just like so happy to just like jump in the water and have fun. We had this tournament for our club team, our um, town club team, and it was called the Barrington Tournament. And I was playing forward, and I was also playing on um, a team that was, the age group was two above mine. And I can't, I can't remember exactly, but I was probably, maybe I was eight and I was playing on a U10 team. And in the tournament, we were playing this really aggressive team. And for some reason, my coach put me on defense. And I'll just never forget him saying, like, I went up to him after the game, and I was like, why, why am I on defense? Like, I don't want to play defense. I don't play defense. And he was like, because you're the only one who could stop them. So I think that was one of my earliest and best memories. Ah, some great, a very scary wildcat. <laughs> a class of 76. What were you, I want to know, what, what was your mental state when you donated that <laughs> here to NFA? All the 70s well encapsulated in that wildcat right there. You know, I love our athletes in the fall. Uh, some great memories, Maya Johnson, one of the all-time greats. But I still want us to hear more. I want more of the favorite teachers from NFA and Ledger. My favorite teacher would be Mr. Pearson. He's uh, taught me for all my four years of high school. He was my gym teacher for two years, and now I'm doing an independent study about sports psychology with him. My favorite uh, teacher was Miss McVeigh my freshman year. Uh, she taught science and I was just always interested in the class. Um, I'm pretty sure I was her favorite student. My all time favorite teacher, he's not really a teacher, he's um, like a guidance counselor. His name is Mr. Mr. Garner because he taught me, was, this was seventh grade, he taught me how to like be respectful to teachers and he taught me how to like keep my calm, don't freak, freak out in classroom and stuff like that. And he just, he was like a role model. My all-time favorite teacher, probably from my mom. You know, I never, never had her as a teacher, but just how I know how she teaches, I know how you know how respected she is by her students and everything. So I'd have to say she's my favorite teacher. My all-time favorite teacher probably be Mr. Jeff from um, Pre-K. He's just a very in good impact on my life. First like teacher I've ever had. My favorite teacher was when I was in seventh grade, and that's Miss Austin. She helped me a lot. She helped me really pass like the eighth grade and everything. She really helped me out a lot. She was there for me when I needed someone to talk to. Well, my, like, my mom wasn't around her dad, so if I need someone to talk to, I'll just go talk to Miss Austin. Uh, my favorite teacher probably is Mrs. Rusick. Um, I've had her twice throughout high school, I had her freshman and junior year for math. Uh, she's always very supportive of me, always comes to all the home games, sometimes the away games. I remember last year in baseball season, she would come to support us, even in Rockville when we played them. Although it's like an hour and a half drive, she still came. And after the game, she gives me oranges and some brownies she makes. They're, they're the best brownies I've ever had. And she's always very supportive, so I really appreciate that. Well, we asked you, where are you watching the game? We're watching the game from the comfort of my living room. Thank you very much. Looks like you're in a nice, comfortable spot. The shades are drawn, though. It's a little dark. Ah, uh, keeping the streak alive. Gal, we had a we had a love. Mini Gal always watches. Always watches on game day. We are tied up here, 26 all at halftime at NFA. And Sports Doctor, 
you were talking before we went to break about uh, what NFA needs to do, or what, excuse me, what Ledger needs to do. What does NFA need to do to come out of the victory today? I think getting the basketball, moving on the offensive end, and knocking down some outside shots. I, you know, the offense got a little stagnant in the first half for Coach Chris Giusti, and they really found no kind of identity or flow. You know, if Ledger was getting layups, I'm not too sure what NFA was doing out there. Ledger did a nice job as far as switching from a man-to-man to man of his zone, kind of caught NFA off guard. But I think the big thing for the Wildcats, Casey, is find some sort of offensive rhythm here in the second half. Well, if you're curious about this game, I got something that might also make you curious. Curious CT, the day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in southeastern Connecticut. So you submit your question, you vote on your favorite question, and we investigate and report. So just go to theday.com slash CuriousCT for more details. Remember, you ask, you vote, we investigate. I think it's funny that there's a guy down there from another media outlet taking pictures of the sports doctor with his camera. That's great. Is that like watching a video of you watching a video <laughs> of you watching a video? That's <laughs> tremendous. Uh, you know you're big time, huh? You know you're big time when? When you've interviewed Nick Hay. And that's it. And that's, uh, that's what you've done. You've, done, you've managed to interview Nick Hay. Good, foot, uh, good, good football game. Good basketball game here in the first half. And, again, this is, um, you know, I, I think the team, the team, the team that makes the least mistakes is going to come out on top, Casey. And, again, I think it's important for NFA to find some sort of off offensive rhythm and knock down shots. You know, neither Hay nor Jackson particularly knocking it down. Hay pulls up inside the three-point line, can't get it to go, and out of bounds. And Roger Warner says... Ledger basketball. Roger Warner along with Rich Radicioni and Andy Kane, our officials here tonight. Now, neither Jackson nor Hay particularly uh, accurate there in the first half. 13 points combined for the both of those players. And NFA trying to pick things up a little bit on the defensive end. A little man, full court man, trying to disrupt Ledger, Ledger's uh, flow. Oh, a step slow was Gromko. You can see that pass coming a mile away. Two junior guards, Whitmore and Bickham. Have to be better with the basketball to keep Ledger in this thing here in the second half. Jackson has five. Nick Hay has nine to lead the way for the Wildcats. Turner drives, spins, hangs in the air. Beautiful move by Kenny Turner Whoa. over Hay. Kiss off the glass for Kenny Turner. Five points for the senior. He's got to have touches here in the second half for Ledger to come out on top. Bit of a 1-3-1 one, one here for Dave Cornish. A little matchup zone. Gromko inside, Mulkentine spins, nothing there. Back up top, Gromko now. Drive, Marquez, little sloppy pass, and NFA will reset. Swing, three-pointer, Gromko, no good. And Cagle will come out of it. Up ahead, Ledger wants to run, and Bickham tries to zip it to Turner. Kept in bounds, and Jackson picks it off for NFA, going the other way. Jackson, little floater, no good. Rebound, Hay, blocked by McGrath, and we're going to get a foul. Wow. Okay, a foul will be on McGrath. I think they're going to call that on Cagle. That was on the, that was, that, I thought that was on the floor after the shot. Now they're going to, late whistle, they're going to call it on Cagle. Uh, Dave Cornish is wondering, I'm sorry, Casey, wondering what that was too. I mean, I thought there's a foul, it would be on the floor. I think he was hit on the offensive rebound. So Hay will be at the line. He knocks the first one down. Dave's still hot over it over there. Back tied up at 28. A little full court pressure now from NFA. Nice screen from McGrath going the other way. Whitmore, Whitmore. Got on walk, yeah. You gotta be more aggressive with the basketball. You get in the lane like that, you gotta be ready to do something with the ball. Yeah, either you know, take it to the rim, commit, attack it, you beat the pressure by attacking. Don't get it halfway at three quarters, then decide to pull it out. Beat the press, attack it, and get to the rim. Hey, foregoes the three. You see the not not quite the same confidence in the three ball. Nick Hay not feeling it just yet. Jackson spins. Got away with a walk there, reverse pivot foot. Jackson pulls inside the three-point line, back iron, gets his own rebound, puts it to the floor, and finishes with a left hand. Uh, big fella cleaning up his own mess that time, Casey. Active on the offensive glass. Stick with it. 
Get yourself an easy two. Now play some defense in the other end against Kenny Turner. Turner, foul line, swings. McGrath from the baseline. Hey, Seamus McGrath is on fire tonight. <laughs> he might be a wee lad, but he plays much, much bigger. Jackson, quick trigger three. Good. MJ starts the second half on fire and a quick timeout. Chris Juice, do you want to set up his defense, talk things over off the bounce, off the make by Jackson? Set up the pressure, and Dave Cornish wants to talk about how we're going to beat the pressure right now. Again, back-to-back -back trips, you saw Whitmore pull up, you saw Kenny Turner pull up, get bailed out by McGrath, you know, on the baseline. But find a way to dribble up, beat the pressure, and create some scoring opportunities on your offensive end once you break the press. Yeah, Jackson's so quick with that. You know, he's, he gets the ball out of his hands very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and he has unlimited range. One of the guy, one of the few people that I think really is open when he walks into the gym. Uh, and he knocked it down. The timeout from Juicy is an interesting one, uh, uh, you know, to set up the defense. I think he doesn't like the press that he had out there. I think he saw that man press. Uh, Turner will break the man press himself. So I think we're going to see a little different wrinkle here, see if they switch off in this man press now into McGrath and yeah much more aggressive is the man pressure they got McGrath trapped there goes to Turner back to Hutchins back to McGrath baseline hangs dipsy do oh Sheamus for two 17 points for Sheamus McGrath leading scorer by far for both these teams and he'll take it to the rim he'll finish it off Gromko for three bottom of the net that's the shots they're going to need to make against that zone here to come out on top a little bump there by Gromko but that's the extra pass catch and shoot no hesitation against the zone Andrew Gromko for a good offensive set that time for the Wildcats other direction got a little foul on the floor as Whitmore was pushing Gromko had him on his hip a little again there's that pressure again and if they'll sag back into man Whitmore, stutters, drives, floater in the lane is good, but an offensive foul as Mulkentine for the second time tonight stood in there and took the charge. Bringing that football toughness mentality to the basketball court. Standing his ground in NFA right now, Casey, can get a little separation between themselves and the Colonels. Yeah, I like what Whitmore did there, though. That's the first time we've said be more aggressive. Aggressive, yeah. He went in and he was. That's a good, good take that time. Mulkentine back on top. Hey, Marquez, three balls, good. Yeah, that's the bread and butter for NFA. They like to dive the shooters into the corner and knock down the threes, and that time was on cue. And just like that, a seven-point lead for NFA as they've come out really shooting the basketball here in the second half. And Coach Cornish wants a timeout both to set up the defense. I think you're going to see that big lineup back out there again. Yeah, I think they call that, that offensive set, they call it either the Boston or Celtic where they – you know, do a little double screen up top and try to get into the paint. And if it's not there, they dive and fade a, a, a shooter to the corner. And they like that open look. They like that open baseline three-point shot. They back-to-back -back triples here. They extended the lead up to seven. I always thought you were going to say that they uh, they run that play so that people overhype them and they sag reluctantly into the four seed. Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be the Celtic? That'd be the Celtic. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Are you going to get Anthony Davis in there? Or what are they going to do? Uh, no, nothing's going to happen now. I mean, in the offseason. Well, well, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. They have well, a Anthony, shot at getting Anthony Davis. Yes. Well, they're the, they're the favorites to get Anthony Davis. They're not the favorites to re-sign him. That's the problem. It all hangs on Kyrie. Is Kyrie going to go back to L.A. with his buddy, Absolutely. LeBron? If, if Kyrie wants to play with Anthony Davis, they can play together in Boston. If he wants to go play with LeBron, Anthony Davis is not going to come to Boston. So. By the way, it has been... Uh, it's been less than a week since the last Boston championship. Mike DeMauro has not stopped <laughs> crying. Ah, uh, what a brutal football game. But a great one in the end. So I guess that depends on your perspective. It's a great Boston. football game. A bad pass by Turner. Marquez picks it off for NFA, and they'll push in the other direction. Molkenton gets himself in trouble. Gromko open three, short iron. McGrath with the rebound. Whitmore pushes, drives, hangs, left-hander is good, and the foul. Well, that's the assertiveness you want to see out of Xavier Whitmore that time. A little ball fake to the outside, head down, get to the rim, the hoop, and the harm for the junior guard. 
So Omar Whitmar with a zero, echoing the first letter of his first name. The O. Oh, I'm sorry, Omar Whitmore. I'm thinking Xavier. I'm thinking of his brother. That's correct. Uh, I apologize, Omar. Now, you're too familiar with the legend. Yeah, I just I know, yeah. Jackson comes up with a rebound, but gets himself into some trouble and recovers. And now Xavier Marquez goes the other direction. A little crossover magic. Three ball. Jackson, no good. Back iron. And a strong rebound by Gray. Up ahead, Turner. Jackson is back. Marquez is back. Turner, basket, and the foul. Kenny Turner gets Ledger right back into it. A strong move, the push, and the finish at the rim. Again, an easy bucket that time. Kenny Turner leaking out. Ledger gets to the defensive rebound. Turner springs ahead and scores. Boy, the game is easy when you're in layups, isn't it? Easy. I apologize to Omar Whitmore. He knows I love him. And his brother, X. Turner with seven points. Make it eight. Three-point play from the three-point, three-star athlete. Hay, the other direction now. Jackson, pull up, hangs, and knocks it down. Pretty touch from Mason Jackson. Bickham will run the point now. Whitmore has on the bench for Ledger. NFA trying to crank things up, be a lot more active on the defensive end. They look to pinch and trap the ball right there. Open three, Turner deep, buries it. Kenny Turner knocks down a triple. Oh, the extra pass, the ability to swing it, find the open man in the open look. That's how you beat that zone. Kick out. Gromko hangs, can't finish. Strong rebound, Gray. Ledger looks to run. Oh, he had McGrath on the leak out on the right-hand side. Missed him. Turner, baseline, tries to find a cutting McGrath, but intercepted by Mulkentine. In and out, rebound. Hey, fall away, no good. And it'll stay NFA ball. So it'll be, uh, excuse me, NFA ball underneath. NFA with a one point lead. As Ledger not going away. Up top, Jackson. Crossover. And a sloppy pass and catch. And it'll be Ledger basketball. That was good defense that time by Kenny Turner, not letting Jackson turn the corner and get by him. Forced him to give up the rock. Mason Jackson, the sophomore, turns it over. Kenny Turner gave him a little bump, just to, just to you know him here, and got him off his mark, and Jackson threw the ball out of bounds. I think the, the word on Jackson's going to be to play him physical anyway. Turner running the high post for Ledger, catches, spins. He's got to take that shot or find McGrath earlier. Too yeah, much dribbling. And a quick double team will come from NFA, too, if the ball stays there. NFA in a 1-3-1, so Ledger's got to go to a 2-1-2 and find the high post. Yep. A little high-low set. Now he trying can't. to find Gray in the back door. Just bad yeah, pass. Can't make that pass. Cutting. Hey, basket is good. Beautiful look from Mulkin time. You can make that pass. That was delivered. That's what Crisply. The, that's what the 1-3-1 wants you to do. They want you to try to make that cross-court pass through traffic. You just can't do it. You got to work the high post. You got to spread out and keep them wide. Now, Turner's got to flash quicker, too, by the way. He's got he's to get there quicker. There's that lob backside. This isn't the NBA. You're not going to get yeah, that Yeah, it's back. not going to work. He's not going to catch the ball by the rim. His head's not there. It's, yeah, it's a good point. A 1-3-1 one, one can be a very frustrating defense, but it's got signature holes in it. you got to get that ball. you got a guy like Turner in the high post. He's got to get there quicker, though. He's not, he's not fighting into the high post right, to get the basketball. He's working his way to the basketball. And NFA will trap. They will trap in the spots on the floor and try to pinch you up a little bit. You know, a little four out now against the 1-3-1, one, one, and we're going to foul with Whitmore. That's another way to attack the 1-3-1, one, one, run a little four out, five out, and try to beat them off the dribble because there are holes in the 1-3-1. One, yeah, one, find the back door, cutter on the other side, kick it out to the three-point line. But again, you talked about the, the 
high post position, flash at the foul line, so important. There it is, Turner catches high post, squares up on Jackson, spins, hangs, and finishes. Perfect, textbook right there, Casey. Kenny Turner, he knows what to do with the basketball when he gets it. Yeah, beautiful move. Jackson drives, hangs in the air, no good. And a strong rebound on the floor by McGrath. And he will get a jump ball as he and Kenyatta peak were tied up. A lunch pail play that time. A couple of guys rolling around. Be legend basketball. I like that. A little dirty work after school here at NFA. Not a bad crowd, by the way, filtering Not bad. in for a 4 o'clock game. So kudos to the NFA student section for showing up. And of course, this game having been postponed from earlier and then ends up being the second part of a back-to-back -back between Ledger and NFA. Under a minute remaining. There goes Whitmore, drives, tries to find McGrath, and we're gonna get a foul, as after Whitmore made the bad pass, he made a little shove, and NFA will have the ball up one, 42 seconds remaining. Ledger going to get a little token pressure here, full court man. Just want to disrupt NFA's offense. Mismatch, Hay and McGrath. Hay takes advantage. There's Turner, quick hands, going the other direction. A layup is good, and it gives Ledger a one-point lead. A great, great on-ball defense that time by McGrath. These Ledger kids are working hard out there now on the defensive end. Under 20 seconds, we're going to get a final shot by NFA. Jackson by, guarded by Turner. Premier matchup. Turner wants to make him go to his left. Shades him that way. Jackson stutter steps, crossover. Goes back right, pulls up in Turner's face, and buries it at the buzzer. Mason Jackson puts NFA up one. We're at the end of three. Are you ready for an exciting fourth quarter? Come on back. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Do I have a hidden talent besides basketball? Um, I'd say playing the trombone. I played it in middle school. I haven't played it a lot since, but nobody knows that I play trombone. I could play piano, and I can also dance. I can say I'm a, I'm a pretty good fisher. I mean, I've been fishing a couple of times. I got that hook down. I'd be like this, be like this, and catch it. I'd say I'm a magician. I know a lot of magic tricks, you know, with cards. Uh, my hidden talent outside of basketball would be ping pong. Frisbee. I'm really good at eight ball pool on the iMessage games. I'm a really good dancer. I can sing. I mean, I can sing, I can rap. I got a YouTube channel. Um, shout it out, D-N-E-K, D -N -E -K, look it up. And I can also do this. Yeah, get a zoom in on that. <laughs> We are back here at NFA, heading into the fourth quarter. A Mason Jackson 15-footer has put NFA on top by a point with eight minutes of basketball remaining. You're watching Game Day Live. Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, and that kid can score the basketball. Yeah, he can rise up and, and knock it down. And again, Kenny Turner trying to force him to go to his left. He shifted gears, a little crossover, rose up from about eight feet. Talk about the high release point on his jump shot. No, Dovis Roski is the only other kid in the league that can get up like that on his jump shot. Yeah, he would, and, and, and because of his size, being 6'5", yeah. you're not, and there's no one blocking his jump shot. I mean, he's, he's above everybody. He wants to, if he's on fire and he knocks it down, like this one, quick trigger three, good! Yeah, it's the shooter's rhythm right now, the catch and shoot rhythm from Mason Jackson, and he's starting to feel it a little bit out there right now. Numbers, McGrath, bounce pass. A little travel, though, as Elijah Morton found himself amongst the bigs didn't know where to go. Just like that, it's back to a four point lead and Jackson's feeling it, so they gotta get out on Jackson. Hay, drives, Peak back to Molkentine now. Peak over McGrath for two. Ledger with that small lineup on the floor right now, giving them troubles against this NFA team. Offensive sets are out of rhythm. Very effective in the first half and the first three quarters with a big lineup in there. Want to get it inside instead, back up top to Turner. Turner wants a high screen, goes left, kicks, Whitmore, three ball, good! 
Omar Whitmore knocks down the triple. So inside outside basketball that time for alleged Ken, uh, Kenny Turner. A little kick out to Omar. O and his brother X. So there are X's and O's? X's and O's, yes they are. Jackson drives, hangs, and he'll draw the foul on Turner. Strong move to the basket from Mason Jackson. He's got a little bit of everything out there, doesn't he? He can knock down a mid-range jump shot. He can knock down the three ball from the corner. And that time he saw the ability to take the hit with the body, try to finish at the rim. I am predicting. Now, I predicted Devastrowski as a sophomore would be. A, I said that when he starts dunking those balls and he started doing that, I just want to say that. Two years from now, when Mason Jackson is a senior, the NFA New London game at this gym is going to be the premier Crazy. game because you're going to have five college bodies on the floor. Whether or not they play college basketball, five bodies of college players, athletes out the gym, and they will be filling this place. Mason Jackson starting to heat up right now. Cagle drives, gets a bump, basket no good, but he'll draw the foul on Peak, and the freshman, Darrell Cagle, will shoot two. Yeah, I think you're right about New London. They're going to be a handful. If not next year, the year after that, they've got some athletes, they've got some big bodies. Well, I trust Mark. I like jo that Pemberton kid well, who can play. Yeah, you know? Mark, J Mark Jones, I'd say, is a pretty good authority on both local basketball and what it takes to be a star yeah. since, since he's was one. Uh, and he identified the other night. He said that kid is the next great one, meaning the Pemberton kid. Yeah. Uh, they've also got a couple of other really exciting freshmen. I think that team is going to be very interesting. Um, and Mason Jackson, as he fills out a little bit in the next couple years, is going to be the in big the entire package. Finds a nice cutting hay, the left hand. Jackson and Hay. Turner, the other direction, the little right-handed floater is good. Turner trying to keep Ledger in it. Mulkentine pulls up and buries it from just inside the foul line. Too, too yeah. easy, yeah, I'm sorry, Casey. Too easy that time for the NFA offense. They're getting good, clean looks four or five feet from the rim. I would suggest that whatever team comes out of this timeout and can play two minutes of defense can really seize control of this game. Because right now, both defenses are getting a little tired, a little yeah. lazy, and both teams are getting way too easy offensive looks. I think if Ledger can come out of this timeout and play defense, they can get themselves right back in it. And yeah, would you want to go back to that big lineup that he had on the floor that worked for him earlier? Get some size back out there. I mean, obviously, you got, you got Kegel, you got... Whitmore, Gray, uh, Kenny Turner, and Seamus McGrath. I mean, can we sprinkle in maybe Hutchins a little bit more and try to take advantage of the um, that NFA defense on the block? I think it's a, I think it's definitely something to look at because it slows the game down too. You can draw some fouls, get some whistles, yeah. and it extends this six minutes. I think the reason you don't see Hutchins on the floor though is NFA has gone full court pressure, and I think Coach Cornish feels a little more comfortable with Gray and McGrath right. and Cagle than with Hutchins against that strong NFA press. All right, the NFA offense is starting to flow a little bit. They're starting to find their spots and knock down shots. Skip pass, Gray in the corner. Pulls up for the three, short iron. Cagle had position, but Peak with a good athleticism got over the top of him. Jumping the ladder that time was Kenyatta Peak. Straight up in the air. Mulkentine, jump stop. Now Jackson drives. Back again to Mulkentine, quick trigger three, no good. And a foul on Peak as he went over the back of McGrath. Now on one end, Peak got over the top of Cagle with that quick jump. That time McGrath stuck his backside into body, him. body, yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't let him have it. Body up. Kenyatta Peak will go get it, though. He's, he'll go get it. He's an athlete that can jump through the gym. Whitmore, Cagle, and Gray all on the right-hand side looking to try to get it inside to Turner. He's posting up on Marquez, has the size advantage. Cagle gets it inside to him, swings it back now in the... McGrath drives. That'd be what they had one more shooter. Inside it goes McGrath. Puts it to the ground. Misses. Turner. Follow. No good. Turner again. And All out right. of the pack, NFA. Peak. Left hander is good. Marquez to peak. Eight point NFA lead. Turner turns it over in the double team. Here comes Peak again. Stripped by Whitmore. Whitmore, left-hander, no good. There's 
Gray knocks it off of Jackson, and NFA with an eight-point lead, but Ledger will retain possession in a little bit of a chaotic back and forth. Frantic pace right there. Frenetic? Yeah, that too. Which is, so is frantic the combination of frantic and frenetic? Yeah, it certainly is. Frantic? Helter Skelter. Well, that, that one works, that's good. So when you're frantic and you're frenetic, you're frantic. It's frantic pace. Okay, it's frantic. The you know what I'm talking about. The well, listen, I do speak sports, doctor. Uh, there's a backcourt violation right there. For those of you that want the sports doctor's words translated for you, I'm available <laughs> at, can help you out at that. hashtag sports doctor translated. And I think that that, that up and down pace kind of favors NFA a little bit. They've got some, you know, some athletes out there yeah. and, you know, in Peak and in Jackson. And, you know, I think Ledger wants to control the game with pace and tempo. Yeah, plus they need whistles. Ledger's got to get back in at down eight. They need whistles. And whistles come with a slower pace. He can't run. Too many quick looks. Uh, almost an opportunity there. Now a kick out. Gromko, pump fake, swings, and ugly. Three seconds. Too much time. Ugly offensive set that time for NFA. Whitmore. Baseline. Cagle. No good. Tipped around. Gromko comes out of it. Cagle rips it away. To McGrath. Pump fake. Left hander is good. Seamus McGrath with a dirty work on the glass. Wait, I see NFA kind of controlling the tempo, controlling the pace on the offensive end. Uh, behind the back, left-hander from Jackson. What a move by Mason Jackson. Ledger needs an answer right here. Gray, Cagle, and he traveled the basketball. NFA, eight-point lead and the ball. Yeah, right now, Casey, you seeing freshman players making freshman mistakes. Little walk, turnover, wasted trip. And again, NFA has cranked up the defensive pressure here in the second half. Found their step a little bit in the offensive end, found their rhythm, and turned it up on the defensive side. Mason Jackson drives, stutter steps, hesitates, kicks. Now Hay drives, hangs in the air. Can't get it to fall, McGrath clears. It's time now where Ledger needs a, a bucket and a stop. Keep the ball moving on the offensive end. Cagle, pull up, 10-footer, no good. Gray keeps it alive, but Marquez comes out with it. Good He's trap. Out finds Gromko. Jackson drives in the air. Can't finish. Cagle and a little double dribble. Carry that time. The freshman, you said it before, sports mm. doctor. Freshman mistake. And a wide open court in front of him. Was a little unsure of himself. Double dribble. Kenny Turner telling him to calm down, relax. You're going to be all right. The senior talking to the freshman. Take your time. Tell you about Kenny Turner. He's just a class act kid. Now, we haven't seen the last of him. His uh, Ledger High School baseball team is going to be exciting this Solid. spring. Oh, nice move, Mulcatine can't finish, but Peak with the rebound, and that time is the friend of the Wildcats right now. We're gonna get a whistle. Mulcatine is down. And I believe bleeding. Yeah, bloody nose from Nolan Mulcatine. So they'll go attend to him, and we'll have a timeout on the floor. My guess is that the football player is not bothered by the bloody nose. No, not so much. Not I, so much. I on the kid. other hand, would be screaming like a little child running off to the sideline if my nose were bleeding in the middle of a basketball game. So speaking of little children, sports doctor, where'd you watch the, uh, where'd you watch the Super Bowl with the rest uh, of the I Patriots a, fans? Yeah, friend's house, a um, bunch of non-Patriot fans there, and I actually watched the second half at home. It's, it's not the same when you're, when you're almost 50 years old. I you know, those, those Super Bowl parties and everything, Monday morning hurts too much. I did see a cute meme, by the way. Mikey DeMauro would appreciate this one. It's uh, Yogi Berra holding a baseball bat with all of his jewelry. And her says, I heard that Brady kid got his sixth ring. That's cute. And he's got 10 rings. Yeah, well, finger. listen. He now, he's not he Bill Russell. He's got 11. No, but, no. But 10 rings is pretty good. Listen, Brady's just, he's, he's awesome. Belichick's the, the, the real deal, too. Uh, Wesley Grant. That's right. 
muffs it. <laughs> NFA take a little air out of it right now. Hay and Marquez. Whitmore hounding him, but right now time is the and, friend of NFA. Ledger only has 14 fouls too, so they need what, three more fouls to be in a situation where NFA is shooting free throws. So I would start fouling right now. Jackson drives, uncontested layup becomes contested when McGrath comes over and hammers him and Mason Jackson will shoot too. And that's yeah, the key to that weave, right? You only go if yep. you're going to get a layup. Yeah, and, and again, with two minutes left to go and only four team fouls too, I mean, I think it's got to be, you know, quick foul, quick foul, and then if you don't get a trap off that, now you're starting to put trips at the line. But you're down eight with, you know, two minutes to go, and if they're, you know, if NFA is content on salting away 30, 40 seconds a trip, that's not good. Well, I think on the other side of things, if you're Coach Juicy, you tell you guys, we're not interested in shots. If they overplay and you can go backdoor for an open layup, we'll take the layup. Yeah. You know, lay points are still more important than time. Right. But we don't want to. You don't want a 30-footer. That's right. You don't want a parking lot job. You want a, uh, you want a layup. Not when Jackson can go to the line and knock him down. And now the biggest lead of the ball game, 10 points for the Wildcats. And Caden Whipple in the ball game for Ledger. Got to uh, go right now. Another freshman. Ledger's got to go. Inside, McGrath puts it to the floor, powers over Jackson, and he'll draw the foul on Peak from the backside. And you got to peek. Uh, he's like, I don't know, take a peek at that one again. I don't think they got him there. I think he's lucky that he doesn't, uh, they don't look at it again. I think they might have called him for two fouls. All ball, coach. McGrath will shoot two. First one is up and no good. You hear that a lot too on Saturdays. Oh ball, I didn't foul him. No one's ever fouled anybody. There's never been an actual foul. The junior, the junior voice has never fouled anyway. No. One time he almost knocked the kid unconscious, but oh, <laughs> no got, foul. Yeah, oh, no ball. Oh ball. Yeah, yeah. All ball. Yeah. I thought the kid's parents were gonna sue me. No good on both, but there's a nice strong follow by Bickham. Jaden Bickham with an athletic follow for Ledger. He cuts it to eight. Too many ball handlers on the floor for NFA, though. Marquez, Hay. You got a foul. Jackson, Gromko. Got a foul. Nice touch pass. Oh, what a beautiful look. Hay to peak. And Ledger needs points down 10, a minute left. They need someone to shoot some threes here. Turner drives. Nothing there. Has to shoot it. Can't get it to go. Jackson comes out of the pack and wisely pulls it out for NFA. We I mean, have to follow. Well, down, you get fouled down 12 with 48 yeah, seconds. Yeah, all right, 10, yeah. This is one of those times where you just got to say, let it play. Let it play. Let it play. Jackson, smart move. Now Coach Cornish has to say, wow. If, you, if you're going to wait all of that amount of yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, you burned over, so you burned a minute. You're not, gonna, a minute. you're not gonna score 10 points in 35 seconds if you're not gonna foul with a minute in five seconds. But NFA, very tough to get to, very elusive. Like you said, they've got a lot of ball handlers out there. They spread the floor very well. Very well disciplined down the stretch. I like the long inbounds here to peak. Eat up a lot of time in the backcourt. Now Gromko, yeah, that's a nice job there by NFA. Jackson trapped, no direct foul. Finds Peak. Oh, nice job by the Wildcats. 20 seconds remaining, and they're gonna salt this thing away here at NFA. A 10-point NFA lead, counting down to 10 seconds, and the NFA Wildcats are gonna go to a 10-point win here over Ledger at home, 64 to 54. The sports doctor will head on down to the floor, and he'll try to effort. NFA head coach Chris Giusti. A happy NFA student section, and as the clock strikes zero, I want to welcome you to the Mr. G's post-game show. Brought to you by Mr. G's Restaurant and Bar, New London Sports Headquarters for over 50 years. Now offering online ordering and delivery through Uber Eats. The sports doctor will be down on the floor with our post-game interview. Brought to you by Mr. G's, he'll be efforting NFA, Coach Chris Juicy and players. The NFA student section is serenading the Ledger Colonels. And if you haven't been to Mr. G's recently, head on down. 
Tell them the folks at game day said stop down. Some of the best food and atmosphere in all of New London. Mr. G's, proud sponsors of the post-game show. The Sports Doctor has a happy NFA team. Sports Doctor. Well, a happy group of NFA Wildcats. And Coach Juicy, you guys showed a lot of discipline down the stretch to close out that game tonight. We've just been grinding all year. We don't make things easy, but we got the W, and we're in February. We got to get these wins. Yeah, what's the difference when you're in a tied game, enter the third quarter, to come into the fourth quarter? What are the little things that help you guys out tonight against a good ledger team? We made a couple shots early in the quarter. I think we extended our pressure. I think that got us moving, and uh, once we see the shots fall, we play with more intensity. Well, the offense seemed to work a little bit in the second half. Nick, hey, you guys found a rhythm in that fourth quarter. <laughs> Talk about how did you guys stick with it to pull away late in that game? You know, we just we started working through our offense more. You know, we weren't taking bad shots. We we're looking for backdoor cuts. You know, we're working through the offense. Juice always he preaches, you know, we got to land on two, spray it, and keep working through the offense. We're going to get a good shot, and that's what we did, and we were successful with it. Yeah, Mason Jackson here, too. Big game. You found your rhythm in the second half. Talk about the trust you have with your teammates out there on the floor. I got a lot of trust in my teammates. I trust them with everything, and I just, it was my brother, so I got to trust them. I got their back, they got my back. All right, Coach, what does this mean for you guys now? What, 11 and 6, heading down the end of the season here? The league now is kind of wide open as it seems right now, so I would tend to think that everything you guys wanted at the beginning of the year is right in front of you. Yeah, that's all you want is to be able to control your destiny. We just got to take it one game at a time. We still got to get better, believe it or not. So uh, we'll get back to the drawing board tomorrow. Well, Casey, nitty gritty time here in high school basketball. NFA, a little bounce in their step today against Ledger. Thank you, Sports Doctor. And there they are, the letters NFA, and you are watching the Mr. G's postgame show. Let's take a look at our upcoming webcast. Now, we mentioned this Saturday, February 9th, we will be at Fitch High School, 4 o'clock for the ECC Wrestling Finals. Very excited about that as game day brings you, I believe it's 13th different athletic event. Uh, we'll have the great CJ Satty with us uh, for that. Then February 12th at the X East Slime at Waterford, the matchup of the game of the year in the ECC. Waterford looking for some payback at home against East Slime. Then we head to the Bears Lair on February 15th, St. Bernard at Stonington and head coach Luzzy wants the Bears lair to be full, and that means the Stonington student section with their opportunity to make some noise. On February 16th, the ECC cheerleading championships live from Waterford High School, perhaps the best and certainly most watched feature of the year, the event that captured the attention in the ECC last year, the ECC girls basketball. And then of course, the finals and the semifinals of the boys basketball culminating in the Mohegan Sun at the end of the month before we move on into state play in high school basketball. <laughs> well, you talked about who is going to take the, that next step, who is going to, you know, try and challenge Waterford and the ECC with East Line being down. Um, I think NFA made a statement here down the stretch. They really found themselves. Mason Jackson hit some big shots. They played good defense. They rebounded the basketball. Well coached and a good scheme down the stretch for Coach Juicy. So Mason Jackson is a star, yeah. and uh, he is the difference maker against a lot of teams. But there have been times this year where he's either been taken out of games or he's disappeared a little right. bit, only a sophomore. And NFA is trying to figure out, you know, what the team concept of NFA is. They're not particularly big, uh, so they can, you know, they have some problems with teams that have some size. So I think the thing that Coach Juicy said that resonated with me was they still need to get better. Um, the potential is there for them to be the other team right. in the ECC. But if they don't improve, then they're just one of the other teams. Right, in the I ECC. think you probably know the importance of the role players. You saw Peak contribute a little bit tonight. You saw Malkatine do his thing. So if you can get your two main guys cooking and then get contributions for some of these other players, they could be a tough, tough handful uh, in league play and state tournament uh, come the end of the month. Yeah, Nick Hay has not been playing his best basketball, and I firmly believe better things are ahead for yeah. him, which means that they could be imminently dangerous because when Hay is feeling it, and Jackson, like who I said, he's open when he gets out of the car. Tough Ironically, handle, yeah. he's not old enough to drive yet, <laughs> but when he gets out of the passenger side, he's open. So I it's think it's going to be a lot of fun in the next, yeah. the next three weeks. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if NFA kind of inched their way into a chance to play for the at the Morgan Sun for the ECC tournament. 
Yeah, it's a little bit different. We got our own run to the sun here in the ECC this year. Uh, let's flip it on the other side of things. Is anybody playing better basketball than St. Bernard's right now? Uh, no, not really. St. Bernard's and probably Waterford. I had a chance to see them last night against Stonington. But St. Bernard's has got something. You know what? They, they big, big, big run last year in a state tournament. Lost to Rocky Hill. Kind of gave a game away. They're back-to-back -back Division II champions in the ECC. They've got Star Power and Max Lee and JoJo Beltran. And they're very, very well coached. Yeah, so we're looking at... A Stonington St. Bernard's uh, rematch over at the Bears Lair. We're looking yep. at an East Lime Waterford rematch over at the X, both of which uh, are sort of previews of perhaps runs to the ECC finals. On the girls' side of thing, it's New London and everybody else. So someone's <laughs> going to have to make it. Maybe it's East Lime. Maybe it's, you know, someone else is going to have to step up. But right now, the Whalers, the number two team in the state, uh, are the class of the East. Yeah, they, they really are. And you know, it's going to be a fun month. We're gonna, you just read off everything coming up on, on game day. It's going to be busy. Gonna be a lot of coffee. There's gonna be a lot of wires and cables being moved and set up, and a lot of gymnasiums. You know what? But the kids make it worth everything. The kids are great. Special thanks to the student section today for the, for the love for the sports doctor. So speaking of student sections, all right. Next up, next Tuesday, Lancer Nation. You've got the opportunity to seize the pizzas back again. We're at the X for that rematch. You are the original student section. Do you hold on to the crown? We're going to find out. And after that, the Bears' lair. Stonington, show up. Fill the Bears' lair. Bring the energy against the St. Bernard Saints. And then, hey, Wildcats, <laughs> you're not out of it yet. No. The ECC tournament will provide you an opportunity to get back in it. Bonus points for showing up at a 4 o'clock in the afternoon game. So I'm, I'm taking points away because you've got a picture of the sports doctor. But <laughs> bonus points for showing up at 4 o'clock. Well, I'll tell you what, too. The Waterford student section at East Lyme, they had an excuse with a big concert in town and stuff like that. Plus there they, are no they, they didn't let them in. There are no excuses <laughs> on Tuesday night. You need to fill the X. You need to bring the energy. And Casey and I, he's buying. I'm flying. We're bringing the pizzas. Now, the next event is the most important because it's the next event. <laughs> Saturday! Saturday! ECC Wrestling Finals. I can't do it on camera, but as soon as we're off, I'm throwing a hip throw on the Sports Doctor <laughs> to take down me. For all of us, the Sports Doctor, Peter Wappy, Mike Tomorrow, and all of the crew, we want to say thank you. Join us Saturday for the ECC Wrestling Finals. Good night, everybody. <laughs>